Hello YouTube. Welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom. And this is supposedly me coding. But today I'm a bit sad. Because I just spent two hours recording and I realized I hadn't pressed the record button. So I have two videos worth of content and this video and the next video are going to be shorter than usual, I expect, because I'm just going to go through what I did while you weren't here watching. Um, I'm a bit disappointed because the first video especially, it was a great success story for me. I went a bit crazy, but there you go. Uh, that's how it goes sometimes if you're an idiot and you don't press rec. So, um, yeah, we're going to have a look at how to run tests in Travis CI. Um, continuous integration, which means that you're going to run tests every time you push a commit into Git or on pull request or something like that. You can run tests in continuous integration. If you enjoy this video, as always, I forgot to say the shtick. Leave a like, press subscribe, ring the bell, share with your grandma, share with the world. Um, this is... A uh, very brief recap of what I did previously. Um, I would have shown you what. Actually, I can show you that part as well. I'm a bit. I'm a bit all over the place. I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit. My head is all over the place. I'm thinking how much of an idiot I am because I forgot to record, and this is making me quite frustrated. I must admit, it's not easy for me to record this video right now. But I need to do it. I need to get the video out there. You guys are showing me support. You're leaving likes. You're leaving comments. So I need, I need to. I, I can't, I can't just. I was tempted to say, you know what? I flip the table and not do anything today, but I need to record this video. So here we are, recording the video. Now, how do you get tests into CI? So if you've never used Travis before, it's fairly simple. Um, Travis CI for Node um, is. It's a matter of uh, signing into Travis, adding your repository to Travis CI, and then all you have to do is add a Travis YAML, to YAML file to the root of your project. Uh, in my case, it's a Node project, so I have to tell it to use Node.js, a specific version. But that isn't enough to run end-to-end -end tests, because for end-to-end -end tests, we don't need only a machine with Node on it. We also need a GUI, a graphical interface, a, a something that shows browsers and that can click on things and, you know, we don't just need a server. So Travis actually gives you the possibility to run Google Chrome in CI. I found this out today and it's really awesome because it means that you can use a free service rather than using a paid service like BrowserStack or Source Labs or something else. Um, so to do that, you're going to need a travis.yaml file that looks something like this. As always, I have a GitHub repository, so if you want to look for the code, you'll find it on GitHub. But what are we doing? Well, this is the basic configuration where we tell Travis, look, this is a Node project, uh, and I want Node.js version 8. Being a Node ver uh, project, it means that by default, uh, Travis is going to run npm install and npm test if I don't specify a script tag. But I am specifying a script tag, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, this dist uh, trusty, oh, sorry, the services xvfb, this means uh, that we need xvfb uh, to run end to end tests. And I found this out, to be honest, by Googling Travis, uh, I think, browser, uh, not browser stack, but browser. Yes, indeed. And I found GUI and headless browser testing. And we have using XVFB to run tests that require a GUI. So the first thing you need is services XVFB. So that's what I did. My script looks like this. So it's XVFB run NPM test, which basically tells uh, Travis, if I understood correctly, to run NPM test in a context where XVFB is available. And we are also using uh, the Chrome add-on in the headless mode. So that's why you have this trusty add-ons, Chrome stable, and before install, run Google Chrome stable. So this allows you to use Google Chrome in CI. Um, and what happens is Travis picks up this file, sees it's a node project, so uses a node image, then it sets up XVFB, runs Google Chrome, and runs a test script. And all of this, though, requires, as I was saying at the beginning, headless mode. Um, so what does headless mode mean? 
it means that if I do npm test, I'm still going to be running my tests. Uh, or actually, before I forget, disc uh, the, a new thing has happened in the following video that you haven't seen yet and that isn't out yet, actually. Um, it's not going to be out in the original version either because I've got to hit record button. But anyway, I need to disable my Google test because, of course, I didn't use a local server to show all the benefits of testing. I decided to just use Google and Google blocks you after a while if you just start pinging it with the same requests over and over again. So my test started failing for Google because I had a capture because, you know, I so it started seeing a capture instead of seeing the actual Google search page. It's not a good day for testing. I'm going to say it's not a good day for testing. Anyway, if you want to test the Google test locally, you can still clean the project and just remove this disabled line. But for now, I'm going to leave it to disable too. So what does headless mode mean? Up until now, when I was running tests, you would see the browser pop up more or less here and um, click at things and do things. Now, if I run NPM test, you don't see anything. Why don't you see a browser open up? It's using the browser, but it's using it in headless mode. Headless mode basically means invisible mode, ninja mode. You can't see the browser. And to be able to enable that, I've added this to my desired capabilities. Chrome options, args, headless. So what this means is, look, Nightwatch, when you run Chrome driver or when you uh, try to open a new Chrome instance, make sure you pass this argument that tells Chrome to be headless. I also enabled a few things here. Um, which is screenshots when tests fail, with screenshots when tests error, and uh, save screenshots to the test output file, which is hidden. Because, uh, again, this is a nuance, this is a typical thing that happens when you're doing end-to-end -end testing. Tests work one way when you're not working in headless mode, you switch to headless mode, and for some reason, they work in a different way. And what was happening in my case, I can't show you now because Google is giving me the capture thing, but um, yeah, there you go. This is why I can't show you now because I'm seeing this. But before my test was failing, because only in headless mode, for some reason, Google was loading in Dutch rather than in English. And so my test relied on English text and it was failed, failing. So I had to make an, a change to my page object and add this to the default URL. But this is just me rambling on about what happened in the, in, in the video you didn't see because I didn't press record. Anyway, all of this brought me to have a test run in CI, and I can show you by going to travis.ci.org how this looks like. So uh, it was an iterative process. Uh, it didn't work first try, and I'll show you what it looked like the first try where it was just npm install, npm test, and what it did is it started failing because it couldn't create a new session. It couldn't create a new session because there was no graphical user interface and it didn't have XVFB and it didn't know how to run a browser. So the test just failed. And after my second approach with the configuration file that you actually saw, we have a green test, a green build, and this makes it look like this, my first test case, and it's all green. And dandy, isn't that isn't that glorious? Isn't that doesn't that give you like a warm feeling on the inside to know that your commit is tested and working? Beautiful. And if I'm not mistaken, I should be able to go and see like a green tick on a commit somewhere. Maybe, no, no, because no. All right, no, it's on a separate branch. I deleted the branch. Never mind. Trust me, you'd be able to see a green tick. So that's me today, Conan with Dom. I know it was a short video, short but intense. I hope you found this useful. If you want to turn, run end-to-end -end tests in Travis CI, this is how you do it. If you have any questions, I, I felt like I feel like I said a lot more in the previous video that I didn't record. Never mind. Um, but if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below in the comments. Again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell share it with the world. Thanks for following. Thank you for the support. I'll see you soon.